Welcome to the Lifestyle Medicine Update. I'm Dr. James Machino. After Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative condition affecting one in 500 adults after the age of 50. Now, it's estimated that about 9 million people will be affected with Parkinson's disease by the year 2030 as the population in many countries grows older. Now, Parkinson's disease is known to be caused by a combination of genetic and environmental factors, but ultimately, the generation of unmitigated free radicals is established as a major cause of the disease. All the literature shows this. High levels of free radicals within dopamine-producing brain cells ultimately kills these cells, triggering the onset of Parkinson's disease and promoting its progression. Now, studies also show that the age-related decline in brain glutathione levels is a primary reason why free radicals become elevated in the aging process, contributing to the development of Parkinson's disease as well as other neurodegenerative conditions such as Alzheimer's disease and ALS. Now, unfortunately, as we age, cells in the brain synthesize less glutathione, which is the brain's primary antioxidant required to quench and neutralize free radicals. Now, even though the brain comprises only 2% of the body's weight, brain cells use 20% of the body's oxygen for their very demanding energy requirements. Now, a side effect of, th of this is the production of oxygen-free radicals that can do a great deal of damage to brain cells if there's insufficient glutathione present to neutralize these free radicals. As I stated, studies confirm that brain cells make less glutathione as we get older, leaving our brain cells exposed to dangerously high concentrations of damaging free radicals, just from the use of oxygen alone to generate energy. As such, in recent years, researchers began investigating ways to increase brain glutathione levels in older subjects to help protect brain cells from free radical damage and also to see if raising brain glutathione levels can be helpful in the management of existing cases of Parkinson's disease. Now, the good news is that researchers have discovered ways to protect our brain against aid, the age-related decline in glutathione levels, and that raising brain levels of glutathione does help to improve the management of existing Parkinson's disease in many cases. The 2021 meta-analysis published in the journal Experimental and Therapeutic Medicine reviewed all the relevant studies where Parkinson's patients were given glutathione supplements and it showed that glutathione is an effective adjunct in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Now, the researcher stated, the study provided medical evidence-based support for the effectiveness and safety of glutathione treatment. Now, more specifically, the glutathione treatment improved muscle and movement function, including tremor reduction in the 450 patients whose data was reviewed in this meta-analysis. The researchers noted that there's no cure for Parkinson's disease at this time, but the use of glutathione can play an important role in blocking the damage to mitochondria that plays a key role in the onset and progression of this disease. So glutathione treatment not only helps to reduce the, the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, but it also helps to inhibit steps involved in the underlying cause of the disease, and that's critically important. This 2021 meta-analysis looked at studies where Parkinson's patients were given either 300 milligrams a day or 600 milligrams a day of glutathione as an oral supplement. The problem, is, as noted by other researchers, is that glutathione supplements are largely broken down in the intestinal tract and they don't reach the bloodstream intact. As well, it's well known that glutathione does not cross the blood-brain barrier very well. As such, taking glutathione supplements is not considered to be the best way to increase blood, tissue, and brain levels of glutathione, especially as you get older. Now, other researchers have shown that the best way to raise brain glutathione levels is via oral supplementation with N-acetylcysteine, or NAC. It's called N-acetylcysteine. It's abbreviated as NAC. So NAC has been shown to be absorbed intact, it enters the bloodstream and it easily crosses the blood-brain barrier, even in older subjects. Once NAC is in the brain, it quickly stimulates the synthesis of brain glutathione. It's spectacular. In fact, when NAC is administered to Parkinson's patients via IV, it's been shown to raise levels of glutathione by 55% within a very short period of time. 
Now, other nutrients have been shown to raise blood and tissue levels of glutathione, and they include alpha-lipoic acid, salimerin from milk thistle, and L-glutamine. Because our blood, body, and brain levels of glutathione decline with age, and because glutathione plays such an important role in quenching free radicals throughout the body and in brain cells, as well as the fact that our liver and our kidney cells require glutathione to detoxify many cancer-causing agents or carcinogens that are known to cause cancer, uh, many anti-aging experts suggest that we should take a supplement each day that helps to maintain more optimal glutathione levels in our blood and our tissues in our brain by the time we reach age 45 or 50. I personally take a supplement each day that contains NAC or N-acetylcysteine and it also has alpha-lipoic acid and salimerin from milk thistle and L-glutamine. These four nutrients work synergistically to raise glutathione levels and they each exert other important anti-aging and health promoting effects. So I've included the references on glutathione and Parkinson's disease and other neurodegenerative conditions in the text below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.